Hello everybody and welcome to NorCal Slot Car Scene. Today I'm going to go through the process I use to blueprint a T-dash chassis to make it a much better running and quicker car. After the blueprinting, I'm going to add aftermarket wheels and tires. The total cost on this car is about $35. To start this project, remove the motor clamp and take off the armature with the top plate. Take out the brushes and also remove the pickup shoes and the pickup shoe springs. The first item in the blueprint process is the motor brushes. The motor brushes may have a little bit of flashing on them, so use 1500 grit sandpaper and very slightly rub the brushes to take off that flashing. Do this on just one side of the brushes. On the other side of the brush, you want to file or cut a small groove. This groove will allow the brush spring holder to grab onto it so the brushes themselves can't rotate when the motor's running. When you look at the commutator, as it comes from the factory, it's pretty dirty and we need to clean it up. I use a com cutting tool from VRP Products to do this. Once you've sanded the commutator, it looks a lot better. There will be, however, particles of metal between the segments. Those particles must be removed. A toothpick works great for this. If you don't remove those particles, your motor will burn out. We're now ready to reinstall the armature into the chassis. Place the brushes into the chassis, the sanded side up and the notch side down. Before you actually do this, put a small drop of oil between the armature and the armature plate. Once you've got the armature plate seated properly on the chassis, go ahead and reinstall the clamp without the idler gear. Turn the chassis over and check to make sure the notches are sitting in the brush spring holders. If they're not, use an X-Acto tip to rotate them so they are. Put a very small drop of oil in the armature hole on the bottom of the chassis. The motor is now ready for a test run. I use a 9 volt battery for this. I let the motor run for 3 or 4 seconds to make sure everything is spinning freely. After that, I turn the motor over and check the brushes to make sure that the notches are still in the brush holders. If not, you'll have to take the car apart and enlarge your notches in the brushes. Now it's time to reassemble the drivetrain. Replace the idler gear and put a drop of oil on the idler gear post. You also want to put a drop of oil on the pinning gear shaft that goes into the chassis. You also want to oil the axle at both points where it goes through the chassis. With the gears installed, use the 9 volt battery and run the chassis and make sure again that nothing is binding and the car runs completely free. I'm using aftermarket front wheels and tire sets because they run a lot truer than stock tires and will give you more traction and a better handling car. The front end is a brass weighted OS3 front end. The plastic keepers that hold the OS front end together can be a bit of a challenge to install on the axle. So use 1500 grit sandpaper and take the sharp edge off the axle. This will make the keepers a lot easier to install. When you install the tires on the wheels, make sure you get them on correctly and they're seated completely flat. In the rear, I'm using a scale engineering tire press to press on the RTHO rear wheels. After you have the rear wheels installed, check them using a tech block. If it's a little bit narrow, bring the wheels out to maximize the rear track. Once that's done, I install the rear tires. I'm using Super Tires brand slip-on rear tires. The rolling chassis is now ready to go. I'm using the stock dash guide pin and I apply silicone adhesive to keep it securely in place. The stock dash pickup shoes typically have a bow in them as they come from the factory. I use flat jaw pliers to apply pressure and make the pickup shoe as flat as possible. The next step in modifying the stock pickup shoe is to bend the tab at the top and create a hook. This will reduce the amount of travel in the pickup shoe and greatly improve handling. I make this bend using the flat jaw pliers. In this picture, I've offset the shoe slightly so you can see how far down from the top of the shoe I start the bend. When I actually do the bend, I'll put the shoe in the middle of the pliers. From the side, you can see how I'm actually creating the bend in the pickup shoe. When you install the pickup shoe on the car, 
you can adjust the amount of travel by changing the angle of the bend. On an actual Frey race car, I would restrict the shoes quite a bit more, but for just a normal good running dash car, having the pickup shoe just slightly above the tire when you see it from the side works just fine. Now place the car on a setup block. We want the pickup shoe that's now flat to run flat against the rail. If you don't have a setup block, you can use a piece of plastic track as a substitute. You can see from this picture that our pickup shoe is very toe heavy, meaning that the front or the toe of the shoe is hitting the rail and the back or the heel of the shoe is not. Using a pickup shoe adjustment tool, I tweak the shoe slightly so the pickup shoe runs flat against the rail of the track. Once you have this adjustment made, double check and make sure the pickup shoes are free and not binding at all. We're done with our basic blueprint of the T-Dash chassis. There's always more you can do to any T-Jet style car, such as lapping the gears and peening the axle holes. This basic blueprint, however, results in a car that runs much better than stock, is faster and easier to drive. It's ready to install your favorite body and take it to the racetrack. Thanks for watching. This is Jim Rose with NorCal Slot Car Scene.